Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for yet another gonna put this up right away kind of video instead of making you wait three to four weeks to see it and if you're new that's most of the videos that you see that come out are ones that have been recorded three to four weeks ahead of a time and sometimes longer depending on what they are and that just keeps me ahead keeps me prepared and all the way around which has been excellent because in this past couple weeks it's been really hard I actually got four weeks ahead now I'm back down to three weeks ahead because I ended up gobbling up a week's worth of videos with so much craziness happening around here so this topic, I was initially going to have it be a craft time chat, but I decided for a couple of reasons I want to just be, I want to be real direct here. I don't want any distractions. The first thing I'm going to do is read to you a post I put out a couple days ago on Facebook in regards to some kind of shifting I've seen going on by reading people's comments under other types of posts. No one's really made any obvious posts about it, but it's more the way threads have developed as I've, as I've been reading them through. Cause I've been, that's part of what's been taking up a lot of time is I've been really trying to watch and evaluate what's been happening out there in the real world, not just what we're given through other YouTube channels and news channels and all that kind of stuff. So let me go ahead and read this post to give you an idea where I'm at least going to start. So, I have been seeing a bad attitude developing towards those of us who chose long ago to start putting up for hard times, no matter what those may be. Let me explain something. We are not the people that cleaned out the shelves of various supplies, preventing others from being able to get what they needed. Why? Because we were already prepared. We built our supplies by buying a little extra here and there through the years while times were good and people were not panicking, always leaving plenty for everyone else. When you go through your own personal crisis like many of us have and learn how important it is to have that form of insurance put up, it all makes sense and is not at all crazy. Many of us have had to fall back on our food stores and are grateful for them. Most of the time, they are situations you will never hear about because they only struck our own household. For some, that was a job loss. For others, a death in the family. For others, a medical crisis of various kinds. For still others, a government shutdown preventing a paycheck or two or three from coming through. For some living in small remote towns, it was extended power outages or road closures that prevented the trucks from getting through. The list is very long and many of us have been through many of these scenarios, but we got through them without a hitch and did not need to panic by because we were ready. Just like now. Thus, we are the ones leaving the toilet paper and other goods so everyone else can still get what they need in the middle of all this madness. We are not selfish. We are not hoarders. We just have a better and more tangible form of insurance that has far better payout than the scam insurance companies out there you pay into monthly just to kiss all that money goodbye when your policy is up and never been used. Okay, that was a long post, yes. And that was the preface that started even more reevaluating of how society is looking at preppers right now. And after you listen to this whole video, I'd like you to listen to everything I'm going to say first. And then I want you to put down below what you have been seeing and experiencing, whether it be in real life interactions with people on the phone, through texting, through Facebook, any social media that you're on. Tell me what you've been witnessing and I'm curious to see what, what you come up with. So again, this post was based on some kind of negativity that initially started out being directed only at the panic buyers, but now I'm seeing it start to kind of cross over. My point of this post was several fold. One was to try to put out that fire before it got started. And the other reason was to also use this again as a teaching moment to help reach those people who are not there yet, who are still, 
who are still just like trying to figure out, well, how do I do this and why should I do this? And hoping that they'll take this very real life situation that we're in right now as a definite wake up call. And when things eventually go back to normal, that they don't just go, okay, I don't have to worry about it anymore. That was a one time event. I'll just go back to living the way I'm, I've always lived. I want people to hang on to this because yes, I'm seeing people wake up, but I'm concerned that their wake up may only be temporary for this particular time. And what we want to see is we want to see people hang on to this momentum. Those that are getting on here. I'm not just talking about the panic buyers. These are not preppers. These are people that are just panicking and buying everything up and preventing. And a lot of people are just being selfish, which really irritates me and just cleaning out whole shelves of things, knowing that other people need these items too and not caring. And so these are not, again, these are not true pep preppers. And we want society to understand that. At the same time, we also need to have a certain amount of of uh, compassion and understanding towards these people that are panicking. They are scared too. Sure, they're not thinking about anyone else, they're thinking about their personal needs and their family's needs. And really, we've talked about this before, when it comes right down to it, when things get really hard, you and your own family are gonna come first anyway. That's our human nature and it's understandable and a lot of that is God-given. We, you know, we as, uh, adults as parents or grandparents, we have been given the, the instinct, if nothing else, to protect our own. You'll see that in the wild all the time. This is not, it's not a bad thing, but how you go about it can be bad. So as things get worse, these kind of, this kind of attitude is also going to grow and get worse. And so we, we don't want to have hate towards these people. Yes, maybe these are some of the same people we've tried to warn for years and they ignored us, but we don't want to hate them, okay? We want to just face the fact that they are scared and they're trying to look out for their own. And so try to have some compassion there. And yes, we like to track, crack jokes about the, the big toilet paper shortage of 2020 and, and that's all fun. I think, I think that's okay to have some levity. We need that too, because Things can be dark and scary if that's all we're focusing on. So there's nothing wrong with having fun with it. But let's also be considerate and compassionate to, to those. Maybe they just haven't been paying attention. Let me move on to the next thing that was a result of a comment that came, even though most of the comments I got under here were very good and supportive, I got one angry comment under this post. It made me sad because I realized the person totally misunderstood my point. And, you know, reading through my whole post again, I can see why they took it that way, but I'm pretty sure they took it that way because they're one of the unprepared and they're probably feeling guilty that they didn't get on board sooner. So here's what they said. I never comment, but I've had enough. I have not heard anyone bashing preppers but I have seen a lot of them, the preppers she means, gloating on their ability to store and grow their own food. Heidi, there are many families that don't have the ability or resources to do what you do. Some people live day to day, taking care of kids by themselves or older relatives. They need money and have to work often more than two jobs. They have to care for sick family members that a dose of elderberry won't do the trick. You are blessed that you can live the way you do, but not everyone can. It makes me feel sad that this person took my comment the way they did. And let me start off by, they kind of implied here that we just have unlimited resources to do, and that's why we're where we're at. We didn't get here overnight. So I wanna cover this first. This took years for us to learn how to use herbs, how to grow herbs. It took us years of stocking up a little at a time here and there and here and there and adding to, to get where we are now. We didn't, we couldn't afford to do this overnight. Most people cannot. Just because someone might be six months, a year, two years ahead on their food storage, that does not mean they are rich. Yes, there are a couple people out there that have managed to do that because they had unlimited resources, unlike the rest of us. The rest of us did it by hard work 
and doing a little at a time and learning as we go a little throughout the years. This is why many of us have been pushing the issue of you need to get yourself prepared. You need to get yourself in a better position. Don't put it off. Start now. That's why we've been so pushy. It's not because we think we're better or smarter than anyone else. It's because we know that it takes time and we know that anything can happen at any moment that can affect maybe only you and your own little personal world or globally like we see happening now. We knew this and so we're just trying to teach and help and reach people. Now, speaking to those who are in the preparedness community and have arrived per se, though I don't think anyone's ever fully arrived, we're always learning and growing and doing better all the way around. We're learning more about how to garden and how to be self-sufficient. Again, these things don't happen overnight. But to those people that have been doing this for a long time and are pretty well set right in the middle of this crisis and didn't have to go out and panic buy, here's something I want to say specifically to you that because this can be, this mentality can be dangerous if we're not careful. So as we see people starting to maybe kind of convert their ideas to prepping isn't so crazy after all, we may also see, like I mentioned earlier, a negativity, whether it be brought about by the media making preppers look like uh, evil, selfish hoarders, which I, I can see it going that way, or it be because of our own selves and maybe comments and things that we say, maybe not meaning to be that way, but having it taken that way. We need to be careful that we do not sound snarky or know-it-all or whatever and and never use the phrase i told you so and be very careful how you choose your words because right now is the time that people are going to be most teachable is it possibly too late right now for a lot of them to get themselves in a better position uh yeah because yeah <laughs> it's really hard to get supplies right now but that doesn't mean they can't continue to try the main thing is is we also want to see them like i said earlier hang on to this momentum and if we have a bad attitude towards them or they perceive it as a bad attitude they're not going to want to have anything to do with it once this is all said and done because they're they don't want to be that snotty snarky i told you so person down the road because that's what they're going to see and that's what they're going to remember we need to be loving and kind and generous with the information that we have to share and make sure that we point out the fact that all we're trying to do is help them because we care about them and we love them now yes there is a natural tendency for some of us because we have been hurt badly by family members and friends when we started down this road and we tried to encourage them to do the same and they laughed at us some of them called us cruel names i've been called crackpot and crazy by so-called friends these things hurt and, and they were serious and um, i've had i've had people ostracize us because they just didn't want to have anything to do with us in our lifestyle and those things hurt. So it makes it hard to not want to fall back on that and throw it in their face. Like I told you so when they've hurt us that way. But here's something else you need to consider when those people reacted that way, let's put ourselves in their shoes. Maybe they were a feeling pressured by you feeling like you thought you were better than them, or maybe they really did think you were crazy. But if it's the first two, maybe the approach initially came out wrong because and, and i can see that i do that all the time when i get uh excited about something passionate about something i have a way of often coming across like i'm right and you're wrong and that's not my intention but that's how it comes out and i'm guessing there's probably a lot of other people that did the same thing in their passion to try to reach their family it was probably too pushy to whatever and that probably put a distaste in their mouth and that's probably why they had that reaction but it might not have been it might not might have been simply they want to label you as crazy because they don't want to do it they simply do not want to period but now they're probably realizing or they should be realizing why you did it so 
it's very delicate. You have to be able to approach it delicately, carefully, and with love and compassion for the situation they're in. Even if it means at this time, uh, maybe not later down the road, but at this time, if they're really in need, like they really don't have any toilet paper and, and they just have no clue how to even use uh, reusable wipes or anything like that or a bidet or whatever it is. And that, you know, even though that shouldn't be the most important thing food should be, but even so, maybe just take a couple rolls of toilet paper over to them and some kind of canned food or even, you know, a, a, take, a, a, take a couple of Ziploc bags, fill it up with some rice, some beans and some flour, maybe whatever it is you think they might need, that simple stuff that they can take and do whatever they want with and take that over with and say to them and say, here, you know, I've, I'll go ahead and share some of this with you to kind of to get you through this time and then find a way to carefully, if it works, if it works into the conversation at all to say, you know, this is just to help get you started that we're able to share with you right now because we were already prepared. If we hadn't have been, we wouldn't be able to help you out right now. Find the, the most delicate way you can to say that to get the message through to them. But you also want to make sure that they understand you cannot continue to be a crutch for them either. As if things continue to get worse or after things get better, if everything collapses again in some other way, that you're not gonna, you may not be able to be there for them because now they've had their lesson. They need to now take that, take this time and learn from it so that they can not have to be there again. So it's just really important that no matter what side of this issue you're on, try to understand if you're not a prepper, you're just now getting into it and you've seen an attitude coming from the prepper community, please understand where they're at, you know, that they've been hurt in the past and maybe that's what some of the, some of the negativity you're sensing, but also their outright concern for you and wanting to see you actually put yourself in a better position. That's where a lot of it's, it's, it's a passion. It's an urgency is what it is. Not just a passion, but an urgency to want to see people really do better for themselves and get, get themselves in a better place. And if you're a prepper already, and you've been doing this for years, try to put yourself in their shoes, whether you think they're wrong or not does not matter at this point. What matters is that we're kind and compassionate and caring, and we do our best to keep a good and positive attitude so that we can teach them and help them get better and not lose what they might be learning right now or not discard it and throw it away because we put a bad taste in our mouth. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to say. And again, share below some of the interactions you've had with people, particularly those who never did any kind of preparations. You know, what, what have you seen? What kind of attitudes? What has been said? Is there a way that you've been able to reach people that you've talked to them and you've seen some positivity coming out of it? And even what ways have you been able to help them through this time? All right. Well, that's it. Hope I spurred some thought there. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.